At the heart of the Wehrmacht during World War II, honor and bravery were considered the cornerstones of a soldier's identity. Beyond physical strength and combat skills, German soldiers deeply valued what they called the warrior's virtues. This belief was evident at all levels, from infantrymen to officers. However, what truly defined a good soldier was not just his ability to fight, but his inner craft, a resilience that allowed them to persevere in the face of extreme adversity and continue the fight against the enemy, even when circumstances seemed desperate. This deep internal conviction and its impact on the battlefield weave a fascinating and complex story of valor and morality during wartime. How did this philosophy influence the events of the war, and what can we learn today from the ethics and spirit of the Wehrmacht soldiers? Join us on this journey through history to discover the true essence of the German warrior. Military cunning and the psychology of warfare were key tools in the arsenal of Adolf Hitler's generals. Aware of the power of morale and propaganda, they designed and executed the devastating Blitzkrieg strategy, which catapulted German forces across Eastern Europe at breathtaking speed. This advance not only solidified the image of Wehrmacht soldiers as unstoppable super-soldiers but also shaped the perception of a formidable, almost mythical enemy made of pure muscle and metal. However, behind this facade of invincibility, German soldiers harbored complex and often contradictory opinions about their adversaries, the British, Soviets, Americans, and other allies. These prejudices, forged in the crucible of propaganda and combat experience, influenced each encounter on the battlefield, for better or worse. Dive into the untold story of how the perceptions and internal morality of the Wehrmacht influenced the development of the bloodiest conflict in history. We will explore a fascinating and lesser-known aspect of World War II, the perceptions and opinions of Wehrmacht soldiers about their enemies. Discover what these men really thought about the virtues, flaws, and character of those they faced on the battlefield, including those they respected, despised, and even feared. It is important to note that these perspectives do not come from SS officers or members of the Nazi party, known for their deep contempt for non-Aryans, but from conversations with common soldiers, many of them prisoners of war, whose views did not always align with national socialist ideology. In World War II, we encountered the unexpected respect that German soldiers had for their British counterparts. Despite being on opposite sides of the conflict, many members of the Wehrmacht deeply admired British troops, especially the infantry. Testimony from a soldier of the Afrika Corps reveals that, if you dressed an Englishman in a German uniform, you would not notice the difference. This admiration was not limited to physical appearance. The Germans recognized the superiority of the British as aviators and the robust resilience of their infantry, whom they nicknamed tough actives. The story of Operation Dynamo, a critical moment during World War II that left an indelible mark on the German psyche. Discover how the bold evacuation of British forces from the docks of Dunkirk not only defied expectations but also changed German perceptions of British tenacity and strategy. Despite admiring the toughness of British soldiers, German officers labeled them as cowards, criticizing the retreat from Dunkirk and the defeat in Greece as acts of fear, not strategy. A Wehrmacht captain even said they were lions led by donkeys, referring to the disconnection between the bravery of the soldiers and the decisions of their leaders. How the German perception of British soldiers during World War II reveals more than simple combat strategies. Wehrmacht soldiers saw their British counterparts as effective and disciplined fighters, especially in long-range combat, but considered them less capable in hand-to-hand -hand encounters. This British discipline, although admirable, was seen by the Germans as a weakness, arguing that the rigidity in following orders limited the ability to make independent decisions, which they highly valued in their own ranks. Despite these differences, many German soldiers deeply respected the British, to the point where some even wished Churchill had accepted Hitler's peace offer, dreaming of a combined army that could have been unstoppable. Join us as we explore these complex dynamics and ask yourself, what would have happened if Churchill had accepted that peace offer? Participate in the discussion and share your opinion on this intriguing historical scenario. The opposite could be said of the Americans, but before we get to them, let's see what the Germans thought of their closest neighbors, the Soviets. The case of the Red Army was profoundly paradoxical for the German soldier. On one hand, the physical state, appearance, and size of Stalin's soldiers inspired enormous respect, which could quickly turn into fear. They seemed relentless and brutal to the point that General Ludwig Grubel declared, when we were near Yumen in Ukraine, 
my tanks had to kill them by literally running them over because they would not surrender in any way. The characteristic of the Russians that instilled terror among the Germans was the sacrifice with which they fought, a deep conviction to give their lives for their motherland. The club itself assured, a soldier who fights for his homeland with unyielding hardness cannot in any case, and especially in the eyes of the ranks, be considered a bad soldier. This clearly coincides with the code of values of the Wehrmacht. Nevertheless, beyond all this deep respect, the Germans considered the Soviets to be extremely crude, and outdated, barbaric, and savage people, far removed from civilization and the technological superiority that Hitler's soldiers, who for themselves represented a future opposed to everything that Stalin, communism, and the Red Army were. Still, no one could fall lower in the eyes of a German than the Americans. They even preferred the Soviets, as outdated as they were, because they considered them warriors. In the case of the U.S., Wehrmacht soldiers believed that all they had was technology and weapons, but they lacked all the respectable qualities and values in a peer or an enemy. In fact, the nickname for Americans among German ranks was the pigs, who, while they had numerical superiority in terms of armament or vehicles, lacked discipline, training, or effectiveness. Even German officers showed no respect for the U.S. armed forces, for them the Americans won only because they launched wave after wave of men directly against the enemy lines until they managed to break through the defenses. One of the examples that highlight this thinking was the very Normandy landings when the Allied forces lost 10,000 soldiers, mostly Americans, because the strategy was to launch the infantry against the bunkers on the beach. For the Wehrmacht, this tactic demonstrated the little interest that the generals had in the lives of their own men, which they found somewhat unpleasant. At the same time, they considered that the Americans lacked inner strength. Although this concept has been repeated a lot, it is not entirely clear what they meant. It could be interpreted as a lack of will to take the initiative or even a warrior spirit, a characteristic that, as we have seen, led the Germans to respect the British or the Soviets. It becomes evident that the type of values that the Germans highlighted in their enemies were those they considered best in themselves. Perhaps war is nothing more than a huge mirror where man looks to discover that although he shoots at the enemy, he ends up killing himself. The respect that the Germans had for the British and Soviets was due to their cultural similarities, while they detested the Americans for strategies that the Fuhrer himself used indiscriminately, for example in the campaign against the Soviet Union or the Battle of Britain. Thank you for joining us on this fascinating journey through military history. In each episode, we discover together the nuances and untold stories that define past conflicts. Do not miss our next episode, where we will continue exploring events and perspectives that could change your understanding of history as you know it. Join us as we unravel the secrets of legendary battles and the strategies of those who led them. See you next time, and thank you for being part of this historical exploration.